Okay. Um, okay, thank you for joining us for the November U Zoom. Uh, so just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, please remain muted. Uh, we will have some time for question and answer at the end where you can unmute. Uh, in the meantime, you can put your questions in the chat and we will do our best to answer them throughout. The presenters may not be able to see it right away, but we've got some people monitoring them. So uh, look there to see if you can identify anything. Um, we will record this so that we can post it on YouTube later. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. Normally I would hand this over to Dr. Dotson now, but she is in the foundation board meeting right now. So she asked me to share her update. So we will do that. But first uh, we need to, we start with our land acknowledgement um, and thanks to Greg Kemble for reminding us that um, we committed to starting with our land acknowledgement, and this is an important part of what we're doing uh, as a college, so I'm going to share this first. So we acknowledge that Yuba College sits on the unceded land of the Nishinan people. We recognize their ongoing connection to this region and commit to amplifying their voice to pursue federal recognition. We offer our respect to the elders and to all Nishinan people of the past, present, and future. So then next up uh, for Dr. Dotson's updates. Um, the first update is about the monthly safety update. Uh, the safety work group has been meeting regularly. Um, they did a lot of work last year, particularly uh, in the spring, they had the fire drill um, and took a lot of information back from that and have been working to um, respond to any of the action plans that came out of that. Um, and then have been working on some additional planning. Now they're working towards um, some active assailant tabletop exercise activities and additional training. Uh, specifically in February, there will be an active assailant tabletop exercise for key individuals who will be involved in the management of um, emergency response in active assailant response. Um, in January, there will be specific training that it is targeted towards most employee groups um, that will have to respond in, in terms of active assailant. Um, and that will be part of the training plan that is launched from the professional development group. Um, it'll be on the calendar of the January week. Uh, so look for that and please attend, plan to attend as any activities that look, uh, look interesting. I know that we had some in the fall activities as well. Um, there will be follow-up trainings related to active assailant on the January activity. Um, the district chemical training plan, Dr. Bagley uh, did some work to gather names of those who need to be involved in that training plan. Um, and so those names were submitted to the district's MNO leadership team um, who will schedule that training with the consultant. So look for that information. If you have any questions about that, Dr. Bagley has most of the information uh, that we have available to us, so please reach out to him. Um, open door with the chancellor. The next one here at Yuba College is November 6th, 1.30 to 3.30 in the faculty staff lounge. Uh, that's the one in the cafeteria, building 300 between flavors and the main area. The next slide. Um, so the facilities master planning process, the timeline is aiming for board approval in March or April of 2024. Um, right now, there's a student and employee survey out. That email should have come or it did come from Mark Urban. Please make sure you look for that. If you did not get that email, please reach out to Mark Urban. It is out now. It's open for a total of three weeks. Uh, we're looking for as much feedback as possible. Um, November 21st is going to be the college council presentation. Um, and then fall of 2024, there will be some open forums. So for employees, that's gonna be November 8th. That's coming up quick, that's two to 4 p.m. Um, for the community, it'll be December 8th, 7.30 a.m. 
Um, and then in spring 2024, there's going to be a draft of that facilities master plan that's brought forward to College Council and then to DC3 and then brought forward to the board for approval. That brings me to my updates, instruction area updates. Summer, fall 2024 scheduling is underway. Um, most of you should be involved, have already heard about that. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to your dean. Uh, accreditation writing teams are getting started. College Council has been facilitating that work. We'll continue to facilitate that work. Program review is coming out soon. Mark Urban and I have been having conversations about that. We will leave plenty of time for people to work on program review so that it doesn't put a deadline that is impossible to meet. We know that the holidays are coming up, um, so we will work to make sure that that happens. Um, I shared that I will uh, work on the timeline with um, Academic Senate President and JP, so the College Council Tri-Chairs will check in, uh, make sure that that works and it makes sense. Um, for curriculum, curriculum updates are still needed from those who are due this year. Uh, there is a tight time frame for getting updates in the catalog for next year. And so if you haven't started working on curriculum, um, you need to get started. And there's if you uh, have any questions about getting started, please reach out to Lori or Elena. Um, we still have some people who were due last year and did not submit. Uh, we'll be reaching out again, um, but it's really important that that gets submitted uh, because there are ramifications for not submitting your curriculum on time. So please work on getting those submitted. And then welcome Dr. Tara Harlan Fontanosa, our new Director of Academic Excellence in the Office of Instruction, uh, working with Dean Christina Venucci and our Tutoring and Learning Center. Um, great addition to the team. We're excited to have her join us. Uh, and I think next up, I am handing it over to our de department spotlight for instruction. And that is our librarian, Dr. Elena Flax. Hello, everybody. I wanted to share with you some things that have been happening in the library. Uh, we had some um, exciting uh, increase in um, library uh, reference research appointments uh, three times um, as much. We had them this year for the July through September compared to last year. At Sutter, uh, circulation numbers have increased by 50%, 53%. We did some estimates uh, that students were able to save at least $40,000 through the loaning of print textbooks and calculators. And we're not talking about uh, loans that went short term. Many of our loans go out for a couple hours at a time. We did not include those. We only included books and um, calculators that went out for the whole semester. We also have the interlibrary loan program and that is a network of borrowing uh, between um, among libraries across the country. And we've loaned books to libraries in 12 different states and four different types of libraries, academic, state, public, and federal libraries. Next. The library also supports the zero textbook cost efforts at the college. And when we get the textbook, um, list, we check to see if there is a, a way for us to purchase um, an electronic copy of a textbook. Sometimes it's a one license or two licenses or unlimited licenses. And we just added um, a section called e-reserves on the library catalog that allows students to see if um, an electronic textbook is available for their class. Most textbooks are not available to be purchased by the library as an ebook, but some are. So whenever it is possible, we make an effort to um, to buy those. And if it's an unlimited license, then students are able to, they would not have to purchase the textbook because it would be available to them through the library. You're welcome to uh, reach out to me uh, if you have any questions or I uh, would like to, for me to, um, to help you with zero textbook cost efforts for your classes. And next is Dr. Teresh. Hi, everyone. So um, I'm just the opening act for the rest of my student services leaders who have important information to share with you. Uh, we have a share out from admissions and records. 
Um, and then we have lots of uh, program announcements and updates from the rest of our offices. a &R will provide a little bit more of a deep dive this month about their services, announcements and updates from um, multiple student services areas. We have lots of upcoming events that you'll hear about. And we also have some brand new employees that we're excited to um, introduce you to. So first up is um, Angel Munoz from Enrollment Services. Thank you, Dr. Tresh. Um, so first of all, I wanted to start out by uh, providing some uh, important upcoming dates. As many of you know, uh, November 9th is the last day to drop classes with the W. Um, November 13th, uh, we will be super busy and priority registration will begin. Uh, students should be able, uh, for those of for those students who were assigned a priority registration date, they should be able to go out into their self-service and see that. Uh, November 15th is the deadline to apply for fall 2023 graduation, and December 20th grades will be due. Next slide, please. Also, uh, this month, we just wanted to provide you um, a brief update or um, just a brief list of just some of the services that we um, provide in admissions and records. We do serve students um, at the Marysville campus and the Sutter County Center. And these are a list of some of the things that we can assist students with, such as um, assisting with the application process, whether it be going to a computer and helping them uh, work through the application or reviewing it here and uh, seeing what they need to do, adding dropping classes, um, updating residency status and helping them through the residency application, uh, transcripts, and I'm not going to go through the whole list, but um, you have it here. This is also available on our website. Um, and all of our services are currently provided in person via phone, and we also have a Zoom link where students can reach out to us in admissions and records, and we can help them through any of these steps or processes. Next slide, please. And uh, finally, we have um, one of the things that we have been trying to do more intentionally is put out uh, different things that are happening. So our outreach have uh, has provided us some dates of some upcoming events uh, that they will be attending um, and assisting with. Uh, these can also be found on the weekly uh, updates, the emails that Dr. Dotson sends out to all of you. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you. And with that, I will turn it over to Marcy Lang. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, you should all have received a DSPS survey in your email sent by our YC Director of Institutional Effectiveness, Mark Urban. The survey was designed by the California Community College's Chancellor's Office and is being sent to all employees in each of the California, California Community Colleges statewide. Um, if you haven't already completed it, please go back to that email again, 1025, uh, to find the link so that you can share your opinions about universal design and disability services. Uh, the survey takes less than five minutes to complete and your participation will be greatly appreciated. Um, also want to announce that the DSPS Seize Candies Student Scholarship Fundraiser just opened and you should receive an email with the link for ordering anytime. Um, please consider this an opportunity to purchase gifts for the holidays or to share a box of candy at gatherings and events over the next few months. Orders are shipped directly to you. And if you spend $70 or more, there's no delivery charge. So you might wanna group your order with friends or coworkers to qualify for the free shipping. And we thank you for your support. And now I turn it over to Martine and financial aid. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope you have a you be having a very productive Wednesday. Um, so today, I just want to remind that the twenty four twenty five FAFSA is changing. Uh, currently, we do not have a specific date as to when it's going to open in December, but once the information becomes available, it will be shared with all of you. Now, in order for us to assist students kind of learn about these changes, we have developed these workshops at the Marysville campus in the library in room 1131 and also at the Sutter Center in room 101. So please share this information with your students, encourage them to attend if they're able to. Uh, we'll be sharing the changes, how that's going to impact them. 
and also to address any specific questions that they may have, okay? So if we go to the next slide. Now, we do understand that some of the students may not be able to attend uh, the workshops that we have developed, uh, but we have also created on our website under announcements, a, uh, a list of information that is available for our students. Uh, we have a documents about the changes on the FAFSA, how to prepare for those changes, frequently asked questions about how those may impact the students. And then there's a 24-25 federal student aid estimator. That link is not working because the Department of Ed is still finalizing that financial aid estimator tool. But once it's available, that, that link will, will go live. Um, so please encourage the students to, to if they're not able to attend, to visit our website. Uh, if you can see on the right hand side bottom corner of the uh, screenshot, you, you see what it says financial aid TV or FATV. Uh, this link will, will take students to a, a, a few videos that talks about the FAFSA simplification and those changes so the students get familiar, okay? Now, we also have here our contact information. We have our phone number, email, we have a Zoom link. For any specific questions that the students may have, they're welcome to contact us and we'll be happy to talk to them and kind of share what are the next steps for them when the 24-25 FAFSA opens up, okay? Next slide, please. Uh, on behalf of the uh, Veterans Resource Center and our veteran students, we are extending a cordial invitation to everyone who wants to participate on the Marysville veteran Day, Veterans Day Parade on November 11th. If you're interested in participating, please reach out to Samantha Delaney. Um, her intent is to invite all of you to be part of this uh, parade for you to represent your program, for you to represent Yuba College, and also to support our, our veteran students, okay? Uh, and if you're interested in participating, please arrive between 9 to 10 a.m. I believe is right next to Ellis Lake, uh, where they, they're gonna be preparing the, the, uh, for the parade. Uh, and if you're not able to attend or be part of the parade, you're welcome to attend as a, a visitor and, and cheer out our, our veteran students there. So, so you all are welcome to attend. And also I believe that um, there's an, a, a, a potluck being also uh, scheduled for uh, November 9th from 11 to 2 p.m. So the veteran students, again, in the BRC Center are inviting you to attend this potluck. Please come in, share some time with our veteran students. Okay, and then uh, that's it for me. And I would like to introduce now our Dean, Anabel Toche. Thank you, Martin. Um, so I get to welcome new employees. And so a warm welcome to Crystal Garcia as our new student success administrative assistant. Crystal comes with a passion for helping first gen college students with similar back backgrounds as herself, uh, with experience working as a student services specialist at Sac State. Uh, Crystal enjoys reading, running, and going to trivia nights in her free time, um, and she has jumped right into our office assisting with numerous projects. So welcome, Crystal. Uh, we also want to welcome Jessica Hall as our new uh, TRIO program administrative assistant. Uh, Jessica is no stranger to Yuba. She actually graduated, um, and while she was here, she was also a student worker working in the tutoring center and as a peer mentor. Um, and she is so grateful to be back and we're thankful to have her. Um, in her spare time, she enjoys being with her small dog and spending time with family and friends. Uh, Jessica likes being active, exploring new things and eating yummy food is what she said. Uh, she, um, she has fit right into the TRIO program and with the TRIO group, they're doing an amazing work there. Um, we're also de uh, delighted to, uh, to introduce Joel Ramirez as our new EOPS Care Next Step and CalWORKs Director. Uh, Joel comes with over 12 years of uh, dedicated experience in higher ed, bringing a wealth of knowledge and expertise to his role. He is currently pursuing his educational uh, leadership doctorate. And so beyond that, his professional dedication, um, Joel's enthusiasm extends uh, to discussions about movies, the World Cup, and enjoys uh, obviously the joys of good food. So we got lots of people that like a lot of food. 
and uh, he is already enjoying the wonderful food that EOPS uh, family has to offer. So welcome to the three of you. We're super excited. Um, next slide, please. Um, so I would like to take this time to let you know that um, you can access all Cultural Heritage Month activities um, through the identity and engagement section of the Yuba College website. So right on the front page, uh, you'll see that there's a, you know, an ident uh, identity and engagement section. If you click on there, it'll take you right to the Cultural Heritage Calendar. Um, next slide. Um, this month, we are celebrating the Native American and Indigenous Peoples Heritage Month uh, from November 1st through the 30th. Uh, from this site, you will find various resources that includes links uh, to the website, recommended books and movies, as well as a list of workshops that you can attend or share with your students. Um, so if you click on it, here's the list of the different uh, workshops that we have coming up for the month of November. Um, and you can also join us in celebrating this month by using our, our Zoom background. And I am going to post it right now in the chat so you can access it. You can also access it through our website um, and along with a lot of information that we have there to share. Um, and so our next uh, Heritage Month will be Black History Month for the month of February. So if you would like to help plan these activities, um, please reach out to either Ruth Catalan, from the, uh, which is our campus life technician, or myself, um, as we are planning you know, already to start um, the activities for February for Black History Month. So moving on to the next slide, thank you. Um, our next cultural, I mean, sorry, um, on November 8th is National First, National First Generation College Student Day celebrating the signing of, of the Higher Ed Education Act, uh, Opportunity Act of 1965. Um, so did you know that 53% of the students we served in 22-23 were actually first gen? Um, so to celebrate um, Yuba College students and employees who are the first gen in their families to go to college, um, the student support programs such as Campus Life, EOPS, Financial Aid, MESA, and TRIO are coming together to host an event on November 8th from 11 to one in the quad in the Marysville campus. Uh, we're providing information about financial aid, support programs, as well as having some fun, um, fun games and music. Um, and also come and get an I Am First Gen sticker that we will be providing in this booth. Um, I'm also gonna add um, to celebrate with us by adding your Zoom link. So I'm gonna include the Zoom link and you can also include that. Let me post it in the chat. You can also use this during the week of November 6th through November 10th. So if you are a first gen student, please um, you know, celebrate with us, put it in your background when you attend your meetings. Uh, also share it out with students, right? So that they can use it if they're doing a Zoom class. Um, and of course, if you are a first gen student, um, we're also wanting to take the time to thank those who supported us through our journey and we wanna encourage you to never give up that journey, right? Most of them told us one day, hey, don't give up, keep going, go to school, get to where you wanna be. And so we're wanting everyone, if possible, if you are first gen, to post a thank you note to whomever you wanna thank. Um, so I will also include that in the chat right now. Uh, we're doing a Padlet so that you guys can include a thank you note. Uh, we will also be gathering these from students just to see what your journey, where your journey, your journey has brought you to. Um, and with that, um, Jeremy, next slide. I'm handing it off to Dr. Selden. Thank you. Hi, so I'm gonna be pretty quick. Um, I just wanted to point out uh, that plenary is in two weeks. And so the resolutions are up. I put a link, I mean, it's clickable, but since you probably won't have that, I, I spelled it out there. Um, I encourage you to take a look at the resolutions and let me know if you have any thoughts or feelings about any of them. I'm gonna vote on behalf of the faculty, but even if you're not faculty, if you have thoughts about them, certainly um, feel free to share them with me. Um, if you are faculty, share them with me, Melissa, or any of the senators. Um, we'll, like, like I said, Melissa and I will be at plenary and, and I'll be voting. Um, there's not tons, but there are, there are quite a few and there's a, quite a few with um, DEIA and things along those lines. Um, if we could go to the next slide. And I also wanted to mention um, at the end of every academic year, the academic senate typically has um, travel funds left over and those travel funds, if they if they go unused, just kind of go away. And so what we're hoping to be able to do is sponsor some student clubs. We're somewhat limited because we can't use too much of the travel funds and 
Um, we tried to do this last uh, summer, but it was at the end of the year and the travel, it was really hard for the students to be able to do the travel in time to be able to get the money. So if you are an advisor of a club or if you know of a club that wants to do some kind of travel, it has to be for an educational purpose. Um, they can apply for funds. We have set aside $6,000 if there's fewer uh, it's a thousand dollars for up to six clubs. If there's fewer clubs that need it, there's a chance that the funding could be more. Um, if you are at all interested in that, reach out to me or Melissa. Melissa has really done more about it. She's 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 the main go-to, but certainly feel free to reach out to me. Um, and then I don't have anything else, so that's all I've got. Uh, next is Eric Burns with athletics. Thank you, Meredith. Uh, happy November, everybody. Um, just a quick athletics update. Fall sports are coming to a close. We've got about two weeks left of those. Uh, that includes um, women's volleyball, men's soccer. Uh, we'll be ending um, next week at some point. Neither team will make it to the playoffs. Football has three weeks left. Uh, and um, <clears throat> we're excited about the last two games that we will be having for football. There'll be evening games on a Saturday. Uh, but all this means that basketball season is here. Uh, men's basketball in preseason is ranked number two in the state, uh, which is uh, cool, uh, but also uh, carries with it a bit of a target for them. So they've got a they have a challenge ahead of them, but they've done really well returning a lot of key kids. Um, and then our women's basketball team, we're also excited about them. They made it through last year with a minimal amount of players, but this year they got a fully loaded roster. So we're excited about basketball getting started. The schedules for basketball are on the Yuba Athletic website. Uh, and then if you wanted to uh, have access to our Outlook calendar with athletic events, just reach out to the athletic department and we'll share that calendar with you if you wanted that to pop up uh, at your discretion on your Outlook calendar. Um, some coming events. Uh, volleyball is tonight. We have a, a volleyball game tonight and Wednesday night, next Wednesday night. Next Wednesday night, though, um, probably on our sophomores. It'll be their last home game. Uh, and then women's basketball opens the home basketball season tomorrow night at five o'clock against Mission College um, here in the gym. And then Saturday, we have a 6 p.m. football game against uh, Siskiyou's. Um, and uh, on that evening, we'll be honoring veterans and active military. Uh, they'll get in for free uh, if they have, uh, they'll admit it free with appropriate ID. Um, all of those games, all of our home games in, in the stadium and in the gymnasium, whether it's soccer, uh, volleyball, football, um, basketball, they are, they're streamed on our YouTube channel, uh, Yuba Athletics YouTube channel, uh, and tickets and, and, uh, are available online as well, or you reach out to the athletic office. I know a guy, we could take care of you. Uh, next slide, please. Just one last, uh, not last, this isn't the last time, but a uh, shameless plug of the uh, Sideline Store. If you're looking for holiday shopping ideas, hit up the uh, the Sideline Store. we got lots of great merchandise and apparel there. Uh, it's not the least expensive thing you'll find, but it does, portion of it does benefit the athletic department. So um, your support in that area is appreciated. And uh, that's the extent of my update for you all. So I will kick it back to Jeremy. Thank you, Eric. Uh, I don't think I saw our bookstore partner, David Medina, on the call. I also don't think I saw anyone from the district. So that brings us to question and answer. Anyone have any questions? I'm not saying we'll have the answers. Well, I just wanted to announce that bookstore orders are due. So yes. yeah. yeah, yeah. just in case anybody missed that. <laughs> Thank you, Denise. Yes, please make sure that you work to get that information in. Um, yes. Even if you are not using a textbook, please get that information in. Okay, well, we'll be here for a few minutes. If you have questions, please feel free to 
phase them. Otherwise, have a great rest of your week. Thank you, everyone.